Okay, that's what you do. It. So you ask a question, mm-hmm. and maybe the question can be cut off, and then maybe the question can be in the, in like a, you know, in like a written thing at the bottom. So, oh, questions that people had. Why is Nashals? Why is this Nash Indian Road Nats hashtag Indian Road Nats 2020? Why is it Indian Road Nats? It's 2021. Why is it called Indian Road Nats 2020? Why is it called 2020? So, uh, one of the questions that a lot of people had was uh, in a lot of the hashtags, uh, kind of hashtags Indian Road Nats 2020. So everyone started asking me, it's like we're in 2021. Why? Why are you calling it Indian Road Nats 2020? So the reason is um, uh, this is actually an anachronic national. So anachronic means that the year in which something is happening is not synchronous with. the year in which it is happening so right so this is actually uh 2020 nationals which is being organized in 2021 it's happened in the past in 2015 uh nationals wasn't able to happen and so they organized nationals in february of 2016 in kerala but it was to crown the national champions of 20 national championships of 2015 so it has happened in the past in this case of course corona kind of made it impossible to pull it off in 2020 so hard to prepare for an event when there's uncertainty but uh, the way we had to approach this I like um, you know I kind of a week before nationals I messaged my coach and you know I said pa I have no idea if this is even going to happen and he kind of shared a, a little nugget and the only way to kind of approach these these things in these uncertain times is to pretend like it's happening and and convince every uh, cell in your body that it is uh, because if you have an iota of doubt doing your taper week and your build week workouts become incredibly hard and so that's what that's the mindset with it, with with which i went into this week and through to the day of racing uh we got to panvel we got a little house outside of the city again to mitigate kind of you know just being in um being in a group accommodation and things like that i strongly believe that just staying healthy in these times is a huge competitive advantage um yeah i mean um so we got there got a house small group of us uh me gagan uh, uh gagan's dad to support gagan uh, a friend of mine anish to support uh, me swani duty uh che of course to capture the whole uh, uh the whole event uh, uh in all its miraculousness and uh and navin raj um so i picked that core because that was the uh core that was going to be part of the team time trial which is the first time i was going to do the team time trial because we karnataka actually had more than one guy who can actually uh who can actually kind of ride in the gtt and we could we could aim for a result uh and that was us we got there and the first thing that hit us was the heat uh we prepped for the heat um so for the tt it's always been my goal event it's the event that it's the marquee event it it starts off the day uh the four days of competition uh it's the most prestigious title in some sense um uh and so that's that was my goal event and the day lockdown was announced it, it was it was this it was this uh um uh, the tt was um I convinced myself that it was going to happen and whenever it did happen I was going to be prepared for it. You know, I didn't want to uh, I didn't want this to be the year that I hang it up, you know, just because the universe decided for it to be uh a crappy year. Um so I went in with that mentality fully prepared. Um it had been 500 days since my last race. Um so March 5th was the TT day and the last race that I'd done was the South Asian uh games uh, individual time trial gold and that was in december uh, early december of 2019 so uh the biggest thing i was worried about was pa oh, i wasn't worried about it but there was a question mark as to where was the where was the competition going to be but then again i just kind of draw my focus towards what can i do to get to the start line in a position that i got to to the start line when i last one in 2019 so what numbers what performance management numbers what power numbers was i doing on my key workouts and just try and replicate that because that 2019 uh, win was the largest margin i'd won by and i told myself if, if i can get there uh, get to the start line this year at that level um 
that's the best I can aim for, you know, as an objective goal. And so that's what I did. Uh, the big change that I made in the last four months leading into this national championships, uh, I told myself I wasn't going to change equipment. Um, I wasn't going to change. I, I mean, I had the option of changing my power meter, my bike, my wheels, uh, my skin suit. But I told myself, keep all the variables constant. Um, and the one thing that I did change was the lead in to this uh, nationals. Uh, it's been a long, you know, four or five year project of mine to get on the track and um, uh, getting into a new discipline of cycling at, you know, 33 when, or 34 when all you've been doing is riding on the road can be considered a big risk. But the way I looked at it was um, Corona silver lining, right? I mean, if not now, then when, you know? Um, and at that point in December, it was looking like there was no national championship. So I took the plunge and said, let me commit to this track project okay, I'm going to need someone world, I'm going to need someone who knows about this world to um, kind of lead me into it. And uh, one night on Instagram, I just messaged my coach, uh, my now coach, Ashton Lambie, uh, second to Ghana at the World Championships. And I was like, huh, if uh, anyone can kind of uh, set the path for me, it's this guy. And he's got a very similar, well, at least I like to think similar story. He's, a, he's an outsider who's kind of found his way in the sport uh, and worked to uh, the top level with perhaps not always the, uh, the, the cushion of support, right? So I reached out to him and that is the one upgrade I made to my training, which is a coaching upgrade. And I think that's always the mindset I've had. How can I, how can I improve uh, myself as an athlete, like physically, um, versus kind of the easy stuff. You can always throw money and get a new TT bike, uh, but the work, how can you upgrade your work? And so I went into that approach. We did a track block, not knowing that nationals was even gonna happen in, uh, in March. And then halfway through Nash, at the end of that, the track block, uh, all of a sudden nationals was confirmed. And so the way I looked at it was if nationals were to happen, well and good because on the track I was training for the pursuit, which the four kilometer pursuit, which involves putting out high power in the TT position. And so I was like, worst case scenario, um, the only thing I'm gonna lack if I focus on a track block is a little bit of endurance. And so I told my coach, hey, could you just throw in one four hour ride in there just for my peace of mind. I knew it was far from ideal to throw a four hour ride into a track block, but we went ahead and did it anyways. And um, and yeah, once we knocked out that 40 day track block, um, uh, I was a different rider. And I didn't know that I was gonna be a different rider at the end of it, but physically I had changed, you know, like um, there's, and I suppose that could be a whole different conversation, but coming back to nationals, uh, that was my lead in to the national championships. It was a 40 day block on the track focused on high power efforts in the TT position, four, five minute efforts at, you know, uh, above TT pace. And, um, and then I just plugged in a one month training block from through the month of February that was TT focused. And uh, I, um, I, I have enough experience now that I plug this one month block pretty much um, and it allows me to transition from base, general base training um, and be ready for a TT event, you know. Uh, not every athlete has to figure out that one month block and I've had, had enough nationals opportunities to figure that out. And so that's what I did. We plugged it in, the numbers tracked perfectly. And uh, what I did in my key workout in terms of power is what I said is my target on race day. And somehow I was able to do it, right? So um, that was my lead in to Nats. Um, once we got there, um, we started to realize that one of the challenges of this Nationals was going to be uh, athletes' ability to adapt, adapt to the heat, um, adapt to changing schedules because we were limited uh, the course, the course timings, we were only uh, given the course for what, six hours a day. And so all the events had to be wrapped up by, by around two in the afternoon. And so that is a challenge on the organizers front, which meant the organizers had to adapt and us as athletes had to meet the constraints of those adaptations that were forced on us 
in terms of events being moved around, shortened, um, and delayed perhaps. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I think the athletes who were the most resilient to change um, uh, really stepped up at this at this national championships. And um, so for my TT, I had done a lot of heat preparation, expecting my uh, TT to be in the heat of the day. Uh, prepare for the worst and expect the best. Um, I developed an ice protocol, um, trainer uh, sauna sessions, um, everything I could possibly do in 30 degree Bangalore heat to prep for 40 degree Panvel heat. And the end, the schedule said we had the first event on the day, and it's 25 degrees, and I was like, all of a sudden, it was a big relief because when you prepare for the worst and you get, you know, a 25 degree TT, um, it just it just buoys you a little bit, you know, buoys you a little bit, and so yeah, it was it was brilliant. Um, race day itself, um, I felt good on race day um, it's only post race that I realized that perhaps I did perhaps get my best effort out I, I averaged pretty much what I do for my my TTs but uh, I definitely um, uh, I did at much lower heart rate than I normally do 166 BPM versus 172 and so that definitely gave me this inclination that I perhaps didn't get the best out of myself on race day which is brilliant going into nationals this year if I have uh, uh, you know six BPM of headroom um, uh, that I could have you know tapped into on a, on a race day that just bodes well for, for uh, nationals 2021 nationals later in November uh, so I ended up with 52 minutes 35 seconds 335 watt uh, average normalized power um, and 166 BPM, so not not a not a not a special effort, and I really didn't feel like I could tap into. Uh, there was like this underlying fitness that I had that I really couldn't tap into on race day. So there's something we need to work on in terms of my taper into race day, which we're going to work on. We've already I've already talked to my coach about it. So uh, that was how the race objectively panned out. Uh, the, as far as the race itself out on the road. That was, that was, I mean, this is my eighth nationals and every national championships have been different. Every TT has been different. You know, this one was punctuated by the fact that I was the last starter uh, as defending champs are. It's the fastest catch I made of my one minute man, uh, Arvind. Um, within about 12K, I was pretty much in, he was in my sight and something weird came upon me where I was like, I just like, I didn't have that killer instinct to make the pass and I almost didn't want to pass Arvind because I felt kind of, kind of, kind of shitty. But so I kind of held him at a distance and just, you know, said, okay, I don't want to pass him with, in the first 15K of the TT. And I just held back, may have been a mistake. Maybe that's one of the reasons why I didn't quite go uh, really deep. And I see that in my power file, in my heart rate file. But with about 15K, I saw that, you know, he wasn't doing anything to change that gap. And so I was like, okay, it's time to close this. And so I timed it so I don't catch him at the U-turn so that our turns would be messed up. I made the pass and at that point I was like, this catch was a little too easy. And so immediately I switched on that mentality of, okay, clearly Arvind's not in great shape this year. I shouldn't assume that I've got this in the pocket because uh, there's probably another contender out there who could be having a good day. And so about 15K after the pass, I said to myself, okay, it's time to kind of get that mentality back uh, where I'm willing to hurt myself a little bit. So I turned that on uh, very consciously at about 15K. Um, uh, and you can see that my second lap in the TT was actually my slowest lap, my least powerful lap, uh, well under my threshold. And the heart rate kind of was at high tempo. Uh, but then I turned it on and, and started really kind of uh, turning on the, the, the engines uh, on the third lap. And then fourth lap, I just kind of went all out. But while all this was happening, on my first um, entry into the U-turn at the five kilometer point, the officials were kind of flailing a little bit at me while I was taking the U-turn. I was thoroughly confused as to what was going on at the U-turn. Um, as I made it to the second U-turn, the same thing happened and I was like, what's going on? There was like this little bit of a doubt as to 
um, as to uh, whether I was doing something off and I couldn't quite figure it out. Uh, by the third U-turn, I had the, the, the flailing had kind of come down, but I didn't realize that I didn't, I didn't think much of it. Um, and I kept executing my TT. Um, with about 4K to go, however, uh, my support motor came up to me and told me to move to the right. So there were four lanes of, uh, on the course. Uh, and I'd assumed it was two lanes out and two lanes back. And I was on the two lanes heading back home at 3K to go, four, three to 4K to go. And my motor comes up to me and says, move to the right. And at this point, I'm the last person on the course finishing up the race. And I'm confused. I'm going 55Ks, 60Ks an hour at threshold, coming in for the finish. And my motor's telling me to go right. And so I look back and, you know, a little bit of time wasted there. And, and I move to the right over one lane, not really uh, understanding logic behind it, but just following an instruction. And I get back into my, try to get back into my zone after being disturbed a bit. And then a couple of seconds later, motor comes up to me and tells my support motor tells me to move to the left. And at this point I'm like, what is going on? Just back off, get out of my way. Let me do my TT. Um, uh, again, not realizing what's going on. And then uh, with 3K to go, the race officials motor with Vien Singh on it comes up to me and um, he looked genuinely disappointed and uh, angry. And I was, at this point I was worried, you know? Um, I, I was like, what is going on? So this is all while trying to finish a TT. And um, uh, the race officials motor started to ask me to move to the left. And so in my head, I wasn't, I, I looked at left and right as two lanes out, two lanes back. And so I assumed right meant just move one lane over or something, right? It was so hard to figure out while you're TTing with your TT helmet on, with the wind blowing, you can't really hear what people are saying. Uh, in any case, the officials mode asked me to move to the left. And at this point I was completely confused. And this whole kind of exchange really unsettled my rhythm a little bit. And when I should have been going full, I was uh, mentally uh, focused on this, trying to decipher uh, the signals. And um, I reckon about 20 seconds was lost there in that confusion, about five seconds on each U-turn with, with, uh, with the confusion there. As soon as I crossed the finish line, there was extreme frustration, just trying to decipher what just went on. Uh, but about 30 seconds to a minute after I crossed the finish line, people start congratulating me. And I'm the kind of guy who doesn't accept any handshakes or congratulations off because of lessons in the past uh, until official results are announced. And as I swung back around and, you know, uh, uh, tried trying to get some data points as to what just went on, uh, word was that uh, I was issued two 30 second time penalties and I was, well, I was, I had no idea what was going on and, and uh, clearly it had something to do with the remonstrations on the course and so I went and spoke to the officials and uh, confirmed that there is the possibility that there were going to be these two 30 second time penalties for no reason at that point. Um, uh, then when I went and talked to uh, Vien Singh, the official who had issued the penalties, um, he explained to me that I was issued two 30 second time penalties for um, for riding on the wrong course essentially. And and that's when I started, okay, started piecing together stuff and, and uh, realizing that uh, the interpretation of what the course was um, in my head and what the officials intended was misaligned. Uh, it wasn't two lanes out and two lanes back. It was one lane out, one lane back, uh, out on one, back on two, out on three, back on four, switch back to one. Uh, so it was this serpentine kind of course, which I've never ever experienced at any national championships, but they were forced to do that here, I think, because so they could run multiple uh, multiple riders and a single wave of riders versus two wave of, uh, waves of riders on one course. In hindsight, you know, I do take uh, the responsibility for not having uh, questioned, um, you know, the, 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 the printed kind of, uh, 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 
the schedule that kind of talked about a course A and a course B. I didn't. I made the assumption that course A was an outbound uh, lane of the TT and course B was the inbound lane. And I, I guess to some extent, I bear responsibility for not questioning that. Um, things like these are typically talked about uh, or explained at the riders managers meeting, but um, it's uh, I, I the managers on my team didn't communicate it to me, and and so and the announcement wasn't made when we were starting the time trial, um, and things were changing so dynamically um, that it's just one of those things that you know just didn't pop up on my radar, and uh, um, I I questioned. The, uh, the time penalty, I laid my case forward saying, you know, uh, I didn't do it with intent. Um, uh, there was no danger on the course of any crashes, but uh, the decision was made and the decision was stuck to. And fortunately, I'd gone five seconds faster uh, than, uh, than second place, even with the one minute penalty. And so I was able to, you know, uh, win my uh, fifth, fifth national title, I think. Um, all's well that ends well. Um, I apologize to the officials, and yeah, you know, it's, it, for me, in my mind, it was case case closed. Uh, it was a long wait for the results that day, almost 12 hours, uh, till the officials finally put out the results, uh, the final results that were put out on the day, and uh, I was relieved to say the least um, that it all ended up that way. plan for us with the Karnataka team was to start with a three-man TTT. We, we had to start with four people, so but um, the plan was to start with three strong TTers in me, Naveen Raj and Gavin, our under-23, uh, Karnataka's under-23 time trialist. But with the changing schedules, a couple things happened. Gavin's time trial was moved to later in the day, post the time trial, instead of being on day one which meant that Kagan had a real chance of winning the under 23 TT and so we didn't want to compromise that and so we made the decision of uh, benching Kagan for the team time trial and so it was up to me and Naveen Raj to really anchor the time trial and then we were like we still need man 3 and 4 to start this event so we just called up the team and said you know found two TTers guys who kind of ride or who kind of ridden a TT bike and uh, um, uh, we made them our third and fourth man and, and we started with the goal of just Naveen and me doing the work while the boys just sat in the back and just finished, you know, because I don't, they weren't able to do much more than that. Um, the TT was also shortened from 60 kilometers to 40 kilometers the morning, uh, the morning of the event. So again, goes back to that adaptability thing. Um, but we went out, we rode a phenomenal TT for just having two guys against the railways who had a team of four, the services who had a team of four who had a bad crash and, and Punjab who had a really strong drill team of four with equally strong riders. Um, and with the TTT, that, it's that minimal delta between your strong and weak guy that allows you to ride a really fast time trial and that's what uh, the, uh, Team Punjab had and they took the win on race, on race day by three seconds over second place over the railways and we had about a minute 10, uh, uh, we were about a minute 10 arrears on them. Uh, for two guys doing a TTT against uh, a four-man team, I think that was a phenomenal result. Um, it gave me the opportunity to ride with Naveen and uh, my namesake and it was a it was a real fun TT. And I, So officially, I had gone as fast in the TTT as I went alone in the ITT. So that was kind of an interesting stat. Another interesting stat was I averaged the exact same normalized power in the individual and the team, uh, except of course in the team, the average power is a little bit lower, 320 versus 335 in the ITT. Uh, exact same average speed, of course, lower heart rate, uh, just like a, for me it was a tempo effort on average. So another indication that so much more is possible in the TTT and it's something that if the if the um, um, if the ducks align, it, uh, we, I have to give a go at the TTD next year if we have the guys for it. We went into the TTD with the expectation of just doing a good TTT and and uh, executing well, and so. Uh, if you look at our lap splits on the TTT, our first lap was our slowest. 
uh, it was at around a 300, uh, 310 watt normalized. Second lap was around 315. But then on the third lap, um, um, a friend of ours on the Karnataka team gave us a little thumbs down, indicating that we were down on somebody. And he also said 30 seconds. So at that point, we got our first inclination that we were 30 seconds down on somebody. We didn't know whether it was on the first, second or third. But that little indication by Sandesh, actually a railways guy, super nice kid, um, a close friend of ours, uh, that little indication on the side of the road gave us this little boost and all of a sudden on our third lap, we went from uh, P8, to P7 up to P5 and P6 once we got that little feedback. Uh, so we were in the hunt for something, we didn't know what. Uh, Naveen thought it was for gold. I knew it was not for gold because I know what a gold medal ride feels like. Um, and then on the, the final lap with five with, you know, with 10k to go, uh, he gave us a thumbs down again uh, without a time gap. Uh, thumbs down. He said uh, he said thumbs up without a time gap. And so we had made time on somebody we didn't know who. Uh, but our lap four was fire. I mean. Uh, we went really fast and um, we went from P5, P6 to P3. Um, and so we won that we won that podium spot in 10 kilometers. We'd actually done three mock 60 kilometer sessions together and we knew what our capacity was and we were like, that fourth lap was us warming up, you know? And, um, and yeah, that was a really cool feeling to know that we had so much left in the tank and if the road was another 20 kilometers long, and if the feedback kept coming, uh, I reckon we could have we could have done a lot more on race day. But uh, um, I guess we'll have to prove that in 2021. So yeah, I mean the plan for the day was literally sleep in on day three, uh, do a little trainer ride, um, update my social media posts, and focus on the crit on day four. Surprise everyone by not rocking up to the road race because I was tired of just being marked out of the road races by you know twelve guys. <laughs> At eight thirty, Naveen Raj just randomly blurts out that a friend of his in Bangalore heard rumors that Maharashtra might go into lockdown on day four and our events might not even happen. And that just kind of like shook me a little bit. I was like, if there's anything we've learned from Corona 2020, it's that you really can't make these lofty plans for the future and you've really got to live life in the moment because you do not know what tomorrow is going to bring. And in that moment, I just, I was just like, I just snapped out of this, this, this stupor and, and said, let's do the road race, you know, let's do what's in front of us. And, I, and then I was like, did a little time check. I'm like, okay, it's 8.30, the road race is at 9.30, we've got about an hour. So I go into Gagan's room, he's just wiping out kind of the, uh, wiping his eyes out. And I was like, Gagan, do you want to do the road race? The, the, who knows if the under 23 road race is going to happen on day four. Um, and uh, Gagan's always up for a race, so he says yes. And uh, so we've got 30 minutes to go from being in our boxers, not even having brushed our teeth, not even had breakfast, to being ready to race in uh, in half an hour. Our bikes aren't ready; they're upside down with the wheels off and the brake pads uh, are removed. And um, that was another, you know, example of just having a brilliant team of people around you and and. Uh, I signed Naveen our mech duty, he looked after our bikes in, in about 15 minutes. He had our bikes race ready from being 50% uh, disassembled, um, switching out our carbon brake pads, setting up our shifting, um, and making sure the brakes work perfectly, all of that stuff. Um, Anish was on Swanee duty, so he made sure our icebox was prepped, our bottles were filled, our food was ready to go. Um, uh, we had delay, pro delay protocols in place and things like that in case the race uh, was delayed. And we were out the door at nine o'clock. I called up Che and said, hey Che, what time is the road race starting? And uh, I just sprung it on him that we're doing it. And uh, I don't know what the look on his face was, but I imagine it was that of shock because um, he was expecting to come back home, and take a shit and have a, have a coffee and take a shit. But uh, uh, Corona, Corona times. Uh, so we went to the course, uh, got there at nine, 
expecting the race to start at 9.30 and, and Corona times. Uh, we had a three hour wait, no less than a three hour wait. And fortunately we had the Spectrum mobile. So we cranked up the AC, uh, filled up our bottles with Fasten Up and you know, Steadfast and, and Energy Bars. And we just, we just sat for three hours and picnicked in the car uh, while everyone else was walking around sweating buckets. Um, and that's it. We just waited for the start of the race, which started at 12, kind of peak heat, around 40 degrees Celsius. And with, I went into that race with pretty much zero expectations. I had done, the first time in my life, I think my preparation was the least specific for an event. Um, and, but at the same time, I knew I was super strong because my day one and day two numbers were exactly the same. Clearly my fatigue resistance and my recovery was going perfect. Um, and our post-race recovery protocols were spot on. Uh, we did world-class cool down protocols, uh, refueling, uh, BCAAs, uh, sleep, uh, you know, uh, everything. We, did, we were doing everything right. And so it's like, if we've done everything right, let's just, you know, let's just expect the best, right? Uh, the strategy in my head was really clear, Gagan for the bunch sprint, um, uh, if everything came back together, and Shri uh, for a small escape, uh, which I would try and help drive, and Shri could hopefully deliver the goods in the sprint. So it was a clear focus, and my job was to keep the race closed, i.e. to make sure that no brakes went up the road, if there were brakes up the road, uh, make sure that they were just dangling, um, make sure that we kept tabs on all the strong riders in the race. Uh, 40 degrees Celsius, 15 kph headwinds on the way out, which meant a 15 kph cross tailwind on the way back. That's what we were, that's what we were dealt on the day. Um, and it was a good race. The first 50 kilometers was a lot of aggression. The standard way the road races play out is uh, the railways and the services uh, uh, set a couple hound dogs on me um, and mark me out of the race. Uh, the other dynamic is that a break never succeeds unless both a railways and a services team are in the break. So typically, if I see a railways guy go, I let him fry a little bit. If I see a services guy go, I let him fry a little bit and wait for the railways to bridge up or the services to bridge up and I kind of mark that attack. So the race played out, first 50k uh, marked everything out, I closed everything up and the legs were phenomenal. I mean, the fatigue resistance that the training we've done on the track with, uh, with Ashton and uh, the weight training, that the intense weight training program that I've been on meant that I was, uh, I was seeing numbers that I've never seen in my life and to see that so late into my cycling career, it just fills me with a lot of optimism about uh, what's still possible. And um, a lot of closing down of attacks, a lot of jumping into moves, but then just uh, kind of letting it neutralize so that Gagan and Shri can rest. Went through about nine bottles in the race. Most riders were going through about three or four, uh, five fasten up gels, uh, uh, two bananas, two energy bars. So quite a bit of food and uh, 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 by with 50k to go, it was Grupo Compato, and uh, it was the kind of lull in racing that you that that which you can sense the body language of people. Half the feels like I hope it's over. I hope I hope this is it of the attacks, and then the real contenders, the the the, the 10, 15 guys who are just on a different level, are like, oh shit's gonna go down in the next 10 kilometers, right? And so um, uh, that's what happened in the next 10k. Um, uh, uh, Shri actually finally showed his blue Keller jersey and at that point I was like awesome this is going exactly the way it should. Uh, Shri made a move, uh, a Haryana guy uh, Vijay Bora made a move, an athlete of uh, Arvind's um, and Rajasthani made a move and there was a small group of three Arvind kind of bridged up to them um, and I saw this group and I was like okay Shri's there uh, I got to get to my job, which is kind of being close so that if uh, we gain separation, I'm there to kind of help kind of take the load and drive the separation, right? So, um, and then going into one of the U-turns, this group kind of coalesced and I was like, okay, 
this is it, this is the race. Well, at that point I didn't know this was the race, but I was like, this is a gap. This is something we can work with, right? Um, and so I bridged up and took Sapir with me, the eventual winner of the race. Um, and, um, and it was a group of uh, the six of us, basically. And we go into the first U-turn, stiff cross headwind, Arvind drops some pretty serious watts. Um, and uh, I hesitate at first saying let him fry because it's just a, just a railways guy. But knowing that Sabir is, um, is, is not a rider who chases, he's, he's a sprinter who uh, is very reserved with his use of uh, his legs. Um, I knew that I had to close this down. I have too much respect for Arvind to let him get more than 150 meters. And so I put in a hard dig to close him down right before the U-turn. We took the U-turn together and we drove it. And we opened up a gap to the four guys um we pushed hard um arvind arvind was suffering a bit and so i kind of backed off to his level instead of riding at my level um and if, because of that the four in the back eventually merged with us um thanks to the work of the rajasthani guy i don't know uh, the yeah the rajasthani guy i don't know his name um and then it was a group of six of us and uh, this is where things started to fall apart because Satpeer brought a pretty uh, negative kind of uh, uh, race kind of tactic which is basically sit on and expect us to carry him to the finish and I wasn't having any of that so I pretty much uh, started, well I didn't start cursing him out immediately but I said you know do your bit. Uh, I started with the, the chicken wing, the chicken wing uh, go through and I was like yeah not happening on my, my watch. Uh, we got him to do short five second pulls and I was like okay this is the best we're going to get out of this guy um, and uh, we drove it um, and the, the cooperation the cohesion just wasn't coming together uh, Arvind was really doing his bit I was doing more than my bit um, I told Sri to sit on um, and then I just I just kind of stood up on the pedals on one of the risers and um, I guess the guys were on their limit and um, uh, a gap opened up, and the next thing you know, I was like, I was like, there was there was thirty there was uh, there was about three hundred meters behind me, and I was like, Phew, you don't want to waste a gap, and this also puts Shri in a good position, uh, where I was hoping maybe someone bridges up to me, and then Shri sits on their wheels. So I was like, this is perfect. Let me drive it. And after I took the U turn, I started getting these vibes because then Naveen came up to me in the motor, and I was like, man, this feels like Jamkandi, you know, twenty seventeen. Um, and I was like, at that point, I switched my mentality to plan C, which I never had at any point, which was solo breakaway. <laughs> and, but I started driving and, and I started driving really hard. And, and at some point I looked down at the numbers and, and um, I was feeling good. I was feeling really good. I looked down at the numbers and I was like, mm, those numbers are not numbers I can sustain on a day like today, 40 degrees heat. I know that if I do this for another, I can do it for five minutes, I can do it for six, I can do it for seven, but if I do it for eight or nine, it's not going to be pretty. Uh, something's going to give and um, I'm only human. So I was like, let me back it off a bit. The guys in the back are chasing. The Rajasthani was really motivated to chase me down for some reason. And uh, so was Arvind. And because uh, I guess he respects me a little too much. And so I wait up and just wait for them to come through and try and uh, resolve some cooperation, but Sapir was, was just stubborn. And so that's when I started abusing pretty much every every molecule of Sapir. Uh, but eventually he did start working, so maybe some effect. And uh, we started kind of developing this uh, pattern where uh, Sapir did very little work. Uh, Arvind really uh, did as much as he could uh, I think he was riding at his TT pace, and I really made the I really made the decision to kind of drive this thing forward. So the course was basically uphill or downhill, and the uphill stretches required riding at 350 to 400 watts. And so every time we went uphill, I drove it because that's where we were making a gap on the peloton, and I knew it. And I knew unless I did it, no one would. Um, and if for this break to work, I had to do it, so I did it and it wasn't hurting me that much. So I was like, okay, I can do this. And then Arvind took us on the downhills at around 300 because that's all you needed. And uh, that consolidated our break. And at one point I was like, is this gonna work? Because 
a uh, couple guys who missed the break like Rahul, uh, the Maharashtra team, um, a couple of the Delhi guys who weren't real contenders started chasing but they weren't strong as uh, Arvind and I uh, in the break. We knew we kind of were the winning break after at one point we looked back there was maybe one or two motors and then after one of the U-turns we looked back and the entire uh, official cavalcade uh, uh, um, uh, caval was behind us and at that point I was like okay I, I, I think they think this is staying so um, so yeah that must be that must mean the gap must be pretty decent it felt like about a minute when we took the U-turns we'd see them pass um, uh, you would see the excitement in the peloton when we passed by the U-turn but I knew that was only momentary excitement because I know the kind of work I was doing on the uphills and I knew that no one in the peloton was capable of it or anyone would be motivated to do that kind of work so I knew we were secure as long as I did the work. So it was really tempting but I, I really stuck to my commitment to myself at the start of the race to set this up for Sri and I just corked it and just kept doing the work. I knew that on the day Sapir was the strongest sprinter in that group but I had a strong belief that Shri could pull off a, a, a second place. Um, that, that every ball in my body was convinced of that, and so I just, you know, said, "Let let me just let's just stick to this plan that we had at the start of the day." And that's what we did, and with about a kilometer left to the finish, um, um, uh, I let out the sprint and. Uh, Shri made a little bit of the wrong choice staying on my wheel. He should have marked Sapir the strongest sprinter in the race, but as they were sprinting, um, uh, Sapir uh, took the took the win. Vijay Bora, the uh, the Haryana rider and athlete of Arvind's, uh, came in second, and then uh, Arvind barely pipped Shri on the line for third, um, and Shri was fourth, and I was I was fifth, and. Um, uh, and that's how that's how it ended on the day but I was super happy with how the day ended up and um, uh, I was super happy that Shri got to see the front of the race and and got to contend with like the best guys uh, you know in Indian cycling and it, uh, I was excited about you know what next year's race might look like and I, I was genuinely happy with the outcome of the race oh yeah and this is Shri's first year in the elite and to finish fourth uh, up with the up with one of the best, the best, one of the best uh, road race sprinters in India. Um, yeah, bodes well for the future. So.